This is I L L, a range of tangent S. And you see that we control at the I L L, a range of tangent S. They are not they are not the same, but they are not defined. <coughs> so I can say that I L that's an approximation. We will uh, discuss this approximation a little bit later to check if it is a good approximation or if it's a Gauss approximation. I L average is almost equal to V control if we assume that this difference is negligible and there is something wrong in this equation that is you cannot say that a current is equal to a voltage or almost equal <coughs> so either you put here an RS or here or you put here V control divided by RS only one of the three pick whatever you want what I uh, use is usually that the I L is equal to V control over RS but it's not a big thing the important is that these two currents are almost the same or these two voltages are almost the same Yes, there is a small error, not too big, if we are in the CCM. And just observe this fact. This is the one of the good, one of the many good points of a control current, current control mode, current control mode, current mode systems. Let's suppose that the input voltage, the input that has these value here increases. We know what happened when we had an input to change uh, and the input voltage change in a voltage mode converter. The input uh, voltage generates a change in the current, uh, in the output current generates a change in the output voltage and only at that point the controller says oops, I have to uh, bring back the output voltage from the right way. Here, as soon as the input voltage increases, <coughs> this slope, how much is this slope for a block converter? V over L. No, no. V, v minus V naught over L. What is this slope in a boost converter? V over L. What is this slope in a buck boost converter? being over F. In any case, in this initial part, there is V. So, as soon as the input voltage increases, my slope over here changes immediately. Because the input voltage is applied directly to the duct. The so, it increases, the slope increases, and what happens to the duty cycle? The duty cycle, P of, is not at this point anymore, the end of the T on phase, not at this point it anymore, is anticipated at this point in time. But this uh, move, this change of this cycle, does not occur after a while, it occurs immediately, in the very same cycle. And so here we have a current coming down, and then we go, go up again, coming down, etc. You see, you change the input voltage, and the current uh, slow change, and the peak value stay the same cycle by cycle. With this technique, because it's a fast technique, we can control the peak current to stay the desired value cycle by cycle. We don't have to wait. There are no holes in our system. If the slope increases, okay, I decrease the cycle immediately because I will reach earlier the threshold value. Okay, that's good. So, if the input voltage changes and my peak current does not change, if the input voltage changes and my average current, practically speaking, does not change, it means that the input voltage has no effect on my converter because the inductor current stays the same. And in a buck converter, especially, the the inductor current stays the same, it means that the output current stays the same. So we, can, we start to see one possible advantage of a, of a current mode control system.
we have no dependency on the input voltage. This effect, the, the slope changes immediately, is basically a fit forward effect. This is the reason why the fit forward is not used anymore, because if we use a current mode system, this is a fit forward that is included for free in, into our uh, control mode system. Okay, let's see. What does it mean? <laughs> it means if my D control divided by RS is almost equal to IF average, this is an approximation, a good approximation. It means that my inductor, due to the feedback that is around it, is not linear, but it's fast. Due to the feedback, this inductor becomes a controlled current source. <coughs> and this control current source <laughs> source is uh, <coughs> current that is V control divided by RS. Why? Because I close the loop around the, the inductor. This is a fast loop, a loop that reacts within one cycle and keeps my peak current constant. Peak current to the value that they want. Not really the average current, but it's very close to the average current. So I can assume, at least for now, that my uh, inductor becomes a controlled uh, current source with this value, and this controlled current source in a buck converter, at this point I am specifying a buck converter, goes to supply the output capacitor and the load. The C not and R not. I transform this second order filter, LC, into a current source, so, due to the feedback, supplying my uh, output. system to, to sense the inductor current. There is a comparator, there is a flip-flop, there is an oscillator, but everything works together to transform my inductor into current source IR average. And this current source goes over this law. Most of the time I am interested to the output voltage. How much is the output voltage that I get from this system? This is difficult because you need to use the Ohm's The IL uh, average times. Uh, V0 equals IL average times R parallel with. Output, uh, uh, the output impedance. The output impedance. That is uh, R in parallel with C. No, no problem. R parallel with one over C. <coughs> How much is this uh, IL average? IL average equals approximately equals um, E control divided by RS. RS is a scale factor. It will translate my current into a voltage, so I can compare a voltage. I don't like to compare current. I am unable to compare current. And so, the output voltage is equal to control or RS times, how is this parallel? It's parallel something like that. It's R divided by R S R C plus 1. If I wanted the transfer function between the output voltage and the control current, <coughs> so I want to find out V naught divided by V control, this is equal to R 
divided by Rs times 1 over SRC plus 1. Let's check it. Uh, everything is okay. This is the dimensionless. R divided by R is the dimensionless. Rc is a time multiplied by a frequency is a dimensionless plus one. Okay. So I'm actually in checks. Yeah. I got the transfer function between the output voltage and the control voltage. And this uh, transfer function has uh, one pole. Is everything now? Did I forget something? The behavior of the inductor is, uh, in this case, uh, doesn't appear. The inductor does not appear in my solution because the inductor has a feedback that forces the current to the inductor. The feedback around the inductor transforms it, forces it to be a current source. Something else missing over there? ESR. ESR, sure. I forgot the ESR. The output capacitor, most of the times, has an ESR. And so, what do I get over here, as a change in this transfer function? For sure, it has R, and this is a right left plane or a left left plane, uh, zero. This is left, this is a normal, it's the standard output capacitor in ESR. And then, if we want to be very precise, here we don't have R in this denominator. We have R plus ESR. That should substitute this R. But ESR is far, far smaller than the load resistance, so it does not uh, change uh, anything important. Oops, I have a problem. And the problem is, I started with a buck convert. A buck is time, time variant and possibly non linear. And I got a transfer function in S. So, in order to write down this with S, I needed to have a linear time invariant system. And we spent hours and hours solving equations and average matrices to average a circuit and then to linearize it. And here, what, what are all this, those steps? Those steps are, I make exactly the same steps, so linearize and average and linearize. Those steps are here. When I say this peak value equals the average uh, value, with some approximation, here I am average. My average is over here. And uh, this average is already linear by itself because the current is proportional, is linearly proportional to the volume. So I don't need to linearize because it's already linear. So, V control, uh, V now over V control equals, we said that R over Rs times 1 plus SC ESR divided by 1 plus SC R flow. This one. This is the transfer function between the output voltage and the peak current. Peak control is basically a peak current indication. Remember what is inside of these uh, control current source.
what kind of a shape has this transfer function? Same of the back of the with the back one pole at the low frequencies and one zero at high frequencies. One pole and one zero. What this? This is V naught or V control magnitude. How much the frequency of this pole? One over two pi C. One over two pi C R. What's the frequency of this zero? One over two pi C E S R. One over two pi C E S R. How much is this gain? R over R S. R over R S. Okay. Why am I so interested to this control uh, function? Because in a current mode, I want to drive the output voltage, change the control voltage in order to keep the output voltage constant. Even if the load changes, even if there are noises, even if there are uh, covers all around. In a voltage mode, I measure the output voltage in order to control the duty cycle. Here, there is no duty cycle that I can know about uh, in advance. When I start the cycle, I don't know how long will the duty cycle be. I start the cycle and I wait. I cannot decide in advance the duty cycle. What I have decided in advance is I start the cycle and I want the peak current or the average current, it's almost the same, at this level. So my control input is not the duty cycle anymore. The duty cycle is, is, is decided by the look of what is my control variable, my input variable to control my, my uh, accelerator gas pedal to, to control the output voltage is the V control. It's not the duty cycle anymore. The duty cycle is generated automatically by the current. So I am so interested to this transfer function because this transfer function allows me to measure the output voltage to compare the output voltage with the reference voltage and this reference voltage in some way goes is V control that controls its current source. So I am interested in this transfer function because now in this transfer function I can design this control system, this uh, error of this one. This is a, an amplifier, it's not a compactor. It has zero supports because the standard compensator we learn how to design in the last weeks, the last few weeks. But in order to be able to design the compensator between the outer voltage and the control input, control input used to be Design. Here, control input is a control voltage in proportion to the current to the platform. In order to be able to design this compensator, I need to know the transfer function between these two values, that is this one. To give me something nice about this transfer function. How many poles do we have? One pole. It looks like, it looks very much like, what transfer function that has this shape that we already made? Bug boost. Bug boost DCM. How was a bug boost DCM uh, compensator? What kind of compensator did we use for a bug boost DCM? Type one. Type two. Two capacitors. And here we need a type two compensator. It's the same shape, so the same compensation. And here we have a big advantage. Is this zero? Fixed frequency or uh, moving frequency? Fixed. Well, fixed frequency. We don't know very much, very precisely what it is, but it's a fixed frequency. Is this called fixed frequency or moving frequency? No, moving. Mm. Too bad. Is this gain constant or variable? Variable. Variable. It varies with R, load resistance. What is missing in this transfer function? Okay, one is done. I, I kick it out from the, from the window, from the window using the feedback uh, loop around the inductor, the fast feedback loop around the inductor. What else is this? V. V. Because 
this game does not depend on me. Yeah, if it does not depend on me, and I show you why it does not depend on me, because if the mean changes, the slope, the current slope to inductor changes immediately, and my comparator senses it immediately, if there is no being, it means that my carbon mode system, my carbon mode converter, has an audio susceptibility that is basically zero. Is it stable or unstable? It will be unstable because it changes with the R. So, we have to check what happens if R changes. Because this is the only variable we are left with, only variable which could change in this system. What happens, happens if R increases? This gain Come on. What happens if R more increases? This gain increases as well. What happens to this pole? <coughs> decreases. It goes down in frequency. Why am I so interested to exam examine? to analyze what happens when uh, the R changes. Because my goal is to keep uh, the control system stable. And in order to keep the control system stable, I need to cross over with my loop gain to a given frequency and not be above this frequency. That is a uh, maximum limit for the crossover, exactly as in the voltage mode. And so in order to find the, the worst case, I have only one method, which is R. And they have to find what's the worst case for R that gives me the maximum gain up over here. Because my crossover will be in this area. Remember, the capacitor of zero is around a few kilohertz. My crossover could be tension kilohertz. So my crossover area, my crossover zone area will be here around a few tens of kilohertz. And uh, I want to know how much the gain changes here when R changes. In the Bacchus transfer function, we had the, the gain that depends from the square of the square root, square root of the R. Yes. In this case, uh, the the gain and the frequency are depending one directly and one inversely from the R. So maybe they are compensating with each other. In the okay, there is a difference. This is the same as yeah, you are you are right. Thank you. Uh, this shape is the same shape as a, for a Bacchus to DCM, but the difference between uh, this condition, this equation, and the Bacchus uh, DCM is that the gain here changes with R, not with square root of R as in the Bacchus. And the pole here changes with R, like in the Bacchus. But here is a proportional, this is inversely proportional to R. That means if R increases, this goes up by a factor of, let's say, 3, this comes down by a factor of 3, the same factor, because one is numerator, the other one is a downstairs of denominator. So if R increases, what they get is something like this. Ball goes down, gain goes up, but at high frequency, nothing changes. And if R comes down, the pulse frequency goes up, the gain goes down, and they have, for example, this condition. But once more, the high frequency behavior stays the same. Yay! Okay, you can go away. Nah, not not going on uh, and excited by this fact. Come on! We just found uh, a control system that has one pole on. Because the inductor in fact inductor loop, uh, pole was, was moved away from by the uh, feedback, current feedback. We have a system that is, uh, has basically zero audio susceptibility. We have a system that has a high frequency behavior, high frequency means a few kilohertz, behavior that is independent on the load. So, no matter how the input voltage changes, it's not there, no matter how the load resistance changes, it's there, but it compensates. The crossover frequency does move. It means that even if the input voltage goes down, even if the load uh, changes, my uh, dynamic back behavior, my pole position, my crossover position does not change. 
I told you when uh, we designed the controller for a bump booster, for a bump mobile, I told you, okay, we have to pick one of these four, the, the worst case for these four points. <coughs> we will have to design it for stability in this point, for example, and then every S, every other point will be stable, but in just the four points. Here, we don't have this problem. We can pick any place, any point, my performances don't change because Vail is not here because R cancels us. Mm. Yeah, good idea, the control, the kernel control mode. <coughs> okay. So, my converter in current mode is something like this. Let's go back to the original server. I need here to sense the inductor current and to transform it with a scale factor Rs. Reset. Set. This is my clock, periodic clock. The Q output of my flip clock goes to drive the MIS transistor with the driver, possibly. Yes. And here I sense the output voltage. because I want to control the output voltage to be exactly what I want. So, this is R, V, C. But this design, you know how, how to do it. You know how to design a type 2 compensator because you have a transfer function for the power stage. You want a crossover frequency coming down over here and the difference between what you, have, what you want and what you get is what your supply, uh, what uh, your compensation has to provide. How much is this crossover frequency? How much was it for uh, what is called the compensation? Six to ten times less than uh, from six to ten times less than the switching frequency. If you go to one hundred times less than the switching frequency, you are basically wasting uh, performances. But nothing bad. Here it's even better because this crossover frequency can go a little bit higher, not so much, but it can go from, let's say, S which divided by 10 down to 4. I don't like it. Too close to the crossover frequency, to the switching frequency, too much noise, and this uh, system is slightly sensitive to the noise, so I can stay here till I go here for a file. But 
Why can we go a little bit higher? Because this cost of frequency stays constant. We don't have big surprises. So we can risk to go a little bit closer to the uncharted uh, world, to the terra incognita, as they say in American, terra incognita. We don't know what they are. But we can go a little bit closer because this cost of frequency stays constant. Okay? Not yet done. We have to, we have to give you a little extra detail, but after the break. <laughs>